going to show you how to get started with Terra Space and Azure Cloud. To do that, we're going to go through the Getting Started Guide. It's all right up here. Just click on Getting Started here. Then click on the Azure icon. Then we click on Next Page. OK, so the very first step is to install Terra Space. OK, so there are actually different ways to install Terra Space. You could do it through the Gem Installer, the Standalone Installer, or Docker Installer. A lot of folks like to use the Standalone Installer because it's nice and easy. I actually prefer to use the Gem Installer just because I have full control over the installation process. And there are some folks who like to use the Docker installer too, because that gives you a container you could throw away so you could try things out really quickly. That's pretty cool. Next, you have to install Terraform. That's a prerequisite. And for that, I recommend, recommend a TFEMV. That allows you to switch between different versions of Terraform really quickly. And that's really nice because Terraform generally tends to move pretty quickly. <laughs> okay, once that's all done, then you run TerraSpace setup check. So I'll go run that. You'll see that uh, I have a TerraSpace version and a Terraform version installed, and basically it should say you're all set, okay? Next page. So next page, we have to configure Azure. So sometimes this is actually the hardest part for a lot of folks. Basically, you have to set up the AZ CLI, and you also have to set up some environment variables. This allows TerraSpace to actually talk to Azure's API. Because what TerraSpace does is it talks to Azure's API, so then you can do some conveniences, like create the storage account for you automatically, those things, okay? so. Once you run an AZ login, it's gonna prompt you for essentially a device login token. And then you're gonna, after you go through the, um, the guide, it's gonna allow you to run one of these commands successfully. So I'm just run one of these commands just to make sure things are still working. <laughs> AZ storage account list. And as, as you can see, I have no storage accounts here and you can also see it there in the portal. Okay, so that looks pretty good on the AZ CLI side. For this next part, okay, uh, to talk to the API, I uh, created this project to help okay, with this. So you could clone it down. CD into a zero check, run bundle to install basically the dependencies, okay? Then it run bundle exec Ruby zero check. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna talk to the API and make sure you can through your environment of variables. Now, if you cannot, it's gonna tell you like what you uh, have to fix and everything, essentially the environment of variables, okay? So that's looking pretty good. Let me CD back here to the top. Okay, let's go to uh, next page. Next page, new project. So this is where we start using TerraSpace, okay? So here's the first command we're going to run. It's our basically a TerraSpace uh, new project, and the project name is Infra here. Then plug in is a zero RM, and then examples. So this is actually generate uh, a project with starting work examples right out of the gates, okay? So I just generate it so I can see the into it now and run tree. So you can see the starter boilerplate structure that was generated for us, and we got that all for free, okay? So uh, let's go into there now, and we'll take a look first at config Terraform backend and provider TF, okay? So backend, you're going to notice, look, there's something called templating language here, okay? So this is what TerraSpace kind of adds. It allows you to actually run some template language on our TF, file, uh, TF files, uh, so then you could add some dynamic programming if you need it, okay? Uh, and it's using the expansion helper method here. It's a built-in helper method. Uh, this one's uh, actually gonna be specific to each plugin provider. So these kind of variables are specific to the Xero cloud. And you can see basically it's gonna substitute out EMV here and location. Okay, EMV is basically TSEMV, that's what it's substituting out. And location is just the zero location you're, you're in. And then you can see storage account name here. Now this is actually kind of interesting, I should point out. So subscription hash. So storage accounts in Azure Cloud uh, are very restrictive in terms of naming requirements. Uh, they have to be pretty short and they're not allowed dashes. They're not allowed kind of special characters at all. So the way we uh, TerraSpace kind of approaches this is it uses your subscription ID and then it generates a uh, a hash, okay, based on that, and then the hash is very nice and short, okay. So that's basically how it kind of handles handles that. And I'm going to show you kind of how this all expands out once we start deploying resources here. But I just really want to take some time to explain what's kind of happening here. So essentially, there's a templating language in here that allows you to basically run essentially any actually Ruby code that you want in here to uh, to um, to generate back in TF. And the nice thing about this is see config Terraform uh, back in TF, it's all centralized. It's uh, basically in processing a single clear direction here. And then it's gonna allow you to use essentially different resource groups or storage accounts for different uh, modules or stacks you wanna deploy there, okay? And the provider TF here on the right-hand side here, that's pretty simple. It's a bare bones uh, Azure RM provider. And this block features block is required, okay? So that's, this is basically as minimal as it gets. And of course you can always configure it. This is just, um, a, a initial example to get you started, okay? All right, so let's go back to the docs here. New project, we've covered uh, config Terraform. Now it says review project, uh, cover app modules, stack modules, and then talk about the difference, differences between modules and stacks. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and close this off and let's go start looking at app modules and app stacks. So under app modules, there's example here. And then uh, under stacks demo, there's a, another main.tf here, okay? So you can see that the stacks main.tf just uses and sources in the two levels up, then two levels down modules example here. And the module example just creates a zero storage account, okay? So this is just a very simple starter to kind of get you going, okay? So that's, uh, that's pretty much it in terms of uh, what the code was generated. Uh, but, so what's the difference actually between modules and stacks? Okay, so in Terraform, uh, everything is essentially a module. It's like having everything as a function, okay? Uh, so that's, that's great because it's very flexible, but some organization would be nice. So TerraSpace gives you kind of some um, basically guidance around organizing your code, okay? So basically app, stacks, demo, those are modules also. And those modules are meant to be deployed, okay? They're supposed to be meant to deploy with your business logic. And then app modules example, those are more meant to be internal logic, okay? Internal modules that are not meant to be deployed or even reusable modules. If you have reusable modules where let's say a stack or two stacks might use the same module, okay? So that's what the difference between the two. Basically it just gives us some organizational life, which is uh, kind of good, <laughs> okay? So uh, that looks pretty good. Review the two uh, app modules and app stacks and talk about the differences between the, uh, the, between the two of them. Let's click the next page here. So now we get to deploy the infrastructure. So let me just actually run this and get this going now. Okay, run TerraSpace up demo. So what that's gonna do now, it, it built the TerraSpace cache folder and you can see it's starting to generate the storage account. That's the storage account that's gonna store your backend state. Basically it's generating this storage account right here back in TF, okay? So let's see the materialized or the built basically back in TF, okay? If we go to TerraSpace cache here, uh, it's under this folder right here, stacks. And you can see basically config Terraform, that got merged in with this folder right here with your stack demo here. And you can see if you put this, let's say just around top of each other and make it very clear. You see this expansion helper method, basically you got substitute out here. Here's the environment and here's the location. Okay, and here's the storage account name with the subscription hash. That basically got generated down to short hash just because again, there's a lot of restrictions around storage account names, okay? So you can see the next step right here, basically it created the storage account, it actually creates a container for E2 within that storage account. And then it's running Terraform init and now Terraform apply. So very shortly it's gonna prompt us and it's gonna say, oh, do you want to? Okay, yes, enter a value. That's gonna create the, the storage account that's uh, being created by uh, um, this demo stack here under main TF. Okay, so now it's creating that storage account. Uh, let's go ahead and now go ahead and refresh the storage accounts here. Both storage accounts should be created very shortly. The first storage account is a state uh, storage account. I do want to point out, see the state uh, backend storage account is managed with TerraSpace. It's not actually uh, done with Terraform here because you want to be able to keep this around. That contains all your history and everything, okay? And TerraSpace actually creates this storage account with a lot of reasonable defaults around security settings, okay? Block public access is off, versions enable, okay? Uh, so a lot of security settings kind of uh, actually create it here. So here you can see that basically the Terraform apply or the TerraSpace up has uh, finished running, okay? So let's actually refresh here. We should see also the, the next bucket here. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time here, but basically it created, uh, let's see what it created. The ID was enormous cub, okay? So we're gonna see enormous cub here. Uh, let me kind of try to there refresh. There, now it shows up, there. So you see SA stands for uh, the storage count. That was kind of prefixing the code right here. SA right here, and then the random pet name. Oh, I should point this out. See the separator here? It's basically a blank separator instead of dash because dashes aren't allowing storage accounts, okay? <laughs> so, okay, so that's why it's SA enormous cub, okay? So that's great. So that's looking good now. Let's go to the next step now. So we deployed the infrastructure, reviewed everything there, okay. Now, uh, we're supposed to change the infrastructure just to show you how it's done, okay. So if we look at this code right here, let's go back to uh, our editor here. Let's close this all down here. Okay, I have stacks demo right here open. You can see there's a storage count and there's a variable here. So let's open up variables here. Let's close that down, close that down and look at variables, TF, okay. So here's the variable definition here. So you could you know, change it and hard code it here with the default, but TerraSpace actually encourages the use of the TFR files, which is what they're designed to be for. You're supposed to pass in TFR files to different settings. So let's say for dev and prod, right? And then you're gonna be able to use the same code and deploy different permutations of your infrastructure. So TerraSpace goes an extra length and actually allows you to generate these uh, TFR files. So then you don't have to think about where you need to put them. So seed is the command, TerraSpace seed demo. Once you run that, what it does is it parses this uh, variables.tf file here, and then it generates 
a starter TFRs file and it puts the exact folder that needs to be generated in here. And you could actually generate it for different environments, like I said. So TS EMV uh, equals prod, and guess what? There's a prod one too, okay? But well, we're gonna focus on dev here, okay? So here we're gonna now use the TFR files here and change this from able HTTP traffic true to false, okay? So now we can uh, run TerraSpace up again, TerraSpace up demo, okay? And that's gonna basically build the, uh, the, the Terraform project again, the TerraSpace cache. Then it's running a Terraform apply, it's grabbing the lock, it's refreshing the state, and soon it's gonna prompt us uh, to apply the changes. So once again, we see a preview here. So we're expecting basically enable HTTPF traffic right here from go from true to false, and that's what it does right there. So go ahead and let's change this value. Uh, enter value, yes, and now, now it's applying our changes there, okay? So we kind of just went through that. We changed the infrastructure, and we actually updated the infrastructure here on this step too, so we're good there. So the last step here is actually to tear down the infrastructure. We'll destroy everything we just created, okay? And then you do that with the tear space down command. Okay, so that's all being applied over there here. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and destroy everything now. Tear space down demo, okay? So uh, if you go tear space down demo, it's gonna basically build the project again and call Terraform destroy, okay? And so it's gonna prompt us very shortly to, uh, to destroy uh, basically the storage account that we just created here, okay? So it is gonna prompt us very shortly here. Okay, enter value, yes, okay. Here we go. It is now destroying the uh, enormous um, cub uh, storage account that was created. Okay, so there it's going right there. And so that takes a, a little bit of time. So I'll come back right when that's finished so y'all don't have to wait. Okay, so the storage account has finished destroying. Take about a minute and 30 seconds or so. Okay, we can kind of go back here and we can hit uh, refresh and there it is gone. So. That uh, one that was created by Terraform is gone. Now this one, remember, is created by TerraSpace. It's managed by TerraSpace. And the reason why it's left around is because it keeps history, okay? And of course, if you want to destroy it completely, just go ahead and destroy it and it's all gone, okay? So that's pretty much it. That covers uh, how to create, basically, uh, resources with uh, TerraSpace and Azure here. Let's click on next page here. There are some next steps here. It just talks about more documentation, uh, the backend config. You can kind of uh, configure it however you want to your heart's content. There's different ways to deploy multiple stacks, and there's also additional videos in this learn site here. And there's a bunch of more features for uh, with the TerraSpace here that I, I'm not gonna cover just in the intro video here. But uh, it's all right there, and hopefully uh, that was very helpful. Thanks.